It may not come as a big surprise that the most popular videos, the videos with the most views on my channel are some of the most controversial videos that I have ever made. I know. Shocker. I have had this channel since 2012. I have created over 2,000 videos, and I was looking back and looking at my most popular videos of all time, and I saw that theme. Again, not surprise, but also found it interesting what was controversial then and what got a lot of views, what got a lot of attention then, versus the kind of videos that seem to be getting attention now. Recently, we've been digging into the history of Jaclyn Hill, and when I was going over all of that information, it was amazing to me and to some of you how much we didn't remember that Jacqueline had done. And that's part of the inspiration for this video is there's controversies and things that have happened in our beauty space that we may have just forgotten about because we haven't talked about it in a long time. So today we're going to go back at my video catalog and we're going to talk about some of the biggest, most quote unquote viral videos that I have had on my channel. So if you are ready for that, if you're interested in that, hang tight. We're getting into it right now. Let's start with number 10. And this video was the most popular video on my channel for about four years. I filmed it in April of 2014 because before there was Timu, before there was Sheehan, there was Rose Wholesale and they reached out to me through email and they said, hey, do you want to try some of our stuff? Why don't you pick out of a selection of things? I don't remember what, how much money they had given me to spend on their site in exchange for a review. And me being 2014, Jen, I was cool with that. I was like, okay, let's try some things. Let's just say it did not go well. Here is the purse that I got. Can I see my reflection in this purse? I might be able to. This is the most plasticky purse I have ever seen. When I looked at it on the website, it looked so cute. I was like, oh my gosh, I need like a bigger dark brown purse. This is gonna be perfect. But the texture of it is not to my taste. Um, it, it does look like, uh, like it's got kind of a leathery kind of pattern on it, but it does not feel anywhere close to leather. It feels like plastic. The next thing I got is this shirt, and this again was my choice on the model. It was really cute, but oh gosh, I don't know what I was thinking. It reminds me of something from Star Trek. This is a headband that I thought would just be really cute for filming, really cute for spring. So see, look how cute that is. So it's it's very uh, stiff metal. It's got this uh, you know little flower here and then these leaves. So I'll try it on so you can see. I think this would be really cute on like someone even younger than me, like going out for the night. I mean, I can wear it like this. I still feel, even though I'm 35, I still feel like I can wear a headband. Uh, yeah, the last thing that I got was a necklace, and this is also really cute. And I haven't worn it yet because I just, I put the stuff in the bag and I'm just waiting for it for a review, but I will definitely be rocking this. But isn't that adorable, the little butterflies? I will wear this all the time in the spring. It is super cute. The question I wanna ask after each one of these videos is do we think that this video would get so much attention today? And I really don't think that it would. There are so many Timu halls and Shein halls and all of that, and they don't seem to get the kind of traction unless that particular person is somebody that's already popular and they're going to get views no matter what they do. But back then, those really inexpensive brands where you would order from overseas, mostly from China, they it just wasn't around as much. So my video was relatively novel. And I think people were shocked at the low quality <laughs> of the products that I received and the fact that I had gotten them from the company and then just proceeded to just be honest about it and be like, look, this is bad. This is really, really bad. By the way, that headband, the headband that I showed broke within like, I don't know, I used it maybe once or twice and then the metal actually snapped. It wasn't actually metal. I don't know what it's made out of. It was fake metal, but the metal snapped. I don't think I ever used that bag. I definitely never used that shirt. That was just awful. And I don't even know if I wore the other necklace either because it just looked really cheap. On the floor when I'm on the force when you use the force, there's no problem. So let us move on to number nine. I do feel like it was, there was a little bit of controversy going on around this product. This was my Tati Beauty 
Blendful review. And if you've recently joined our beauty space, Tati Westbrook, who is huge here on the YouTube beauty community, she came out with her own brand called Tati Beauty, which has now closed, most likely not because of a lack of sales, but because of some lawsuits that were happening behind the scenes with people that were working with Tati Beauty. So after she released her eyeshadow palette, she released something called the Blendiful. And it was really just a triangular makeup application tool. Hello, my friend. Today is the day that I review the Blendiful and the Baby Blendiful for you. I am excited to tell you my thoughts on these. Uh, this is very interesting because it's, the, the public opinion seems to be a bit mixed. Some people are saying, oh my gosh, it's $18 for a poof. Some people are saying this could be a beauty tool that revolutionizes the way we do our makeup. And I feel like I'm kind of falling a little bit in between, but uh, to see this stuff in action and really get into it, we, we need to take a little time, a little time to hang out and have a discussion and really see these in action. And also uh, I'm gonna cut this up for you so we can see what's inside because I'm really curious. Now, in practicing with this, I did find that it's better to tap and roll rather than um, than swipe, kind of like the way you would use a beauty blender. But the difference that I like about this a little bit better is that because it's so large, you cover an area a lot faster than you do with a beauty blender. Tap the concealer in. Okay, that's what we're working with there. Pros now. for the Blendiful. I like the size of it a lot. It's nice to be able to blend things very, very quickly, even though you have to do that press and pack kind of thing. It's not annoying because it is so large. If you're used to using a beauty blender to press and pat, this is going to be a lot faster for you. I also really like how soft it is. It feels really, really good, and I can't wait to cut this open and see what's on the inside of it. And with that being said, let's cut this open. <laughs> All right, I got one shot at this. You got one chance. Do not miss your chance to blow. I cannot mess this up. So we're gonna cut into this and see. I'm like, my heart is beating. Why am I so nervous? It's it's not like, all right, let's just do it. Just do it, Jen. Ooh. I'm just gonna cut off, ooh, okay. So what's inside, it's not surprising. Okay, so it's attached inside. That's interesting. So it's just a piece of foam. It's really soft, really soft. I actually kind of expected it to be like memory foam or something inside, but it's it's really just a soft piece of foam. Interesting. And then it's sewed here on two points and it didn't seep through. So that's kind of encouraging because if you've ever cut open a beauty blender, you can see that the product goes all the way through where this one, it does not. And this is the second time I've used the, um, the Blendiful and it didn't seep through at all. It's still bright white. So that's kind of cool. I could just sew this baby back up. It'll be good. Look, see, I can still use it, right? <laughs> So do I think this video would do as well now? No, I don't. <laughs> I don't think it would. Even if Tati Beauty still exists, I think it probably would have gotten a decent amount of attention, but it wouldn't have done as well. I think the cutting it apart thing is intriguing for people. And I think maybe that would have still brought a good number of people in just to see the inside of it. But I mean, really, what did we expect to see inside? You know, like it was, it just revealed what we probably expected, which was it had a little sponge inside, but one thing I really liked about this video was that it showed that the the outside of the Blendiful kept the makeup away from the inside. To me, that showed that it wouldn't get as dirty and funky as a beauty blender because we know if you cut open a beauty sponge, the inside is gonna be disgusting. You really have to get rid of it within a shorter period of time because they will get disgusting. So this gave us kind of hope that the Blendiful would last longer in our collections. Do I still use the Blendiful? No, I, I think I used it maybe two or three more times after that and I think that it was just that it didn't do so much better than the tools that I, w I was already using. It wasn't like a life-changing kind of thing. And I don't think Tati ever claimed that it was going to be. It's just kind of another alternative. Um, I have seen more tools like this coming out since then, but I, I didn't find it to be in any way a better or more effective or faster method of applying makeup. So I kind of abandoned it. Call it in and I'll make you feel like you on the cloud and you can't sit still. 
My eighth most popular video is the first of two of me talking about eyeshadow pigments that are not FDA approved for eye use. This was the first one I created and it was about the very first launch from Manny MUA's brand Lunar Beauty, his Life's a Drag palette. I think the hook on this was the what Manny didn't tell you part. I've used that hook on many videos since and those that seems to gather, you know, get people excited about what's going to happen. I always make sure it's true, that it, there's things in there that I think you should know that the person didn't tell you. But I do think that it's a good hook for a video title. So I do think that this video would still get a lot of views today. So there is a very anticipated palette launch today. And I want to put some information out there that I know is going to be controversial. I wanted to kind of get ahead of it and get you this information before you purchase it so you could make a more educated choice as far as whether you wanted to purchase this palette or not. So due to the fact that it is a red dye, it's a pigment, it is possible for it to stain the eye area, the media eye area. So there is a warning on the back of the palette. I have personally used them all and I have turned out fine. I do not have staining on my eyes. Another quote that Manny needs to be super careful about, use of unapproved color additive in a cosmetic product or of an approved color additive, but in an unapproved manner, which is, if he called his palette an eyeshadow palette, makes the product illegal, adulterated, and subject to seizure by the FDA. So he needs to be super, super careful on his packaging and on his website that he does not call it an eyeshadow palette. The only thing that's different now is I do think people have a lot more knowledge about the FDA not approved for eye use pigments. Uh, a lot of us know, and I say that in the video, that they are approved, approved in the European Union union and that, you know, unless you're sensitive to them, you're probably going to be fine. But there wasn't a lot of knowledge about it back then. So I was able to give that information in a way that wasn't previously uh, really wide out there. So I do think that it did better then than it would do now. But I do think that it would still do pretty well today in 2023 if it was released now. On the floor when I'm on the force when you use the force to this was a huge video, huge. This was a big video for me um, and my personal journey on YouTube. This was kind of a turning point for me. This video was why I need to take down my Jaclyn Hill and Morphe reviews from February of 2020. I told everybody that Morphe, uh, the customer service had told me an untruth. I can't say that the person straight up lied. Maybe they didn't know, but it was enough for Morphe to apologize to me publicly. This is the story. So, you know, the white palette from Jaclyn Hill. I had reviewed it, I had loved it, I had talked about it in so many videos, so many videos, about how much I really liked that formula, how it was better than any Morphe palette I had ever used before. Jacqueline was coming out with a second version of it that had like kind of a summery look, and she had said in the video that it was the same loved formula as the first palette. Around the same time, my sister-in-law came over to my house and she had said, hey, I got the Jaclyn Hill palette that you rave about and it's, I don't like it. I was like, what do you mean you don't like it? How can you not like it? Like, what? What is going on? So she brought her palette into the house. She had it in the car. I have no idea why she had it in the car, but she had it in the car <laughs> and her husband went out to get it and I swatched it and I was like, this isn't right. Like this is not, cause I, you, I love this palette. I knew what it was supposed to be like and it wasn't right. So what ended up happening was we found out that the formula had changed. So in that video, I went deep in, I went deep in. I did swatches of not just my palette and my sister-in-law Amy's palette, but I also bought a brand new one from Ulta and swatched that one too, because people were saying, well, maybe somebody returned a fake to Ulta and that's the one that Amy had bought. Oh no, the one that I bought from my Ulta matched the one that Amy had brought over. It was the same. I just wanted to prove that it wasn't a fake one. And my swatches looked significantly different on a lot of the shades than Amy's did. The big thing we also learned during that was that with the formula change, that they had gone from being a vegan palette to being a not vegan palette. And that was a huge, huge deal. So do I think that this would get as many views today? Absolutely, 100%. <laughs> 
<laughs> this is something that I feel like really um, people, anything that's like new information, that's like an exposing kind of thing. Like I need to share this with you because this is something information that's not out there. I, those, those videos still do very, very well. I don't know if it would do quite as well as it did back then because I've had videos similar. Like when I exposed that Jaclyn Cosmetics was not owned by Jaclyn Hill. That one did not get as much attention as this one did. And I think that's just a lessening of the number of people in the YouTube beauty, beauty community. I just think there's less people watching beauty videos than there were back then. But I think, you know, relative, it would still do very, very well, I think. <laughs> Number six, we actually just talked about this because Susan Yara has just sold Naturium for, uh, it was like $255 million, $355 million. I can't remember the, the number off the top of my head, to Elf Beauty. And so we just talked about this in What's Up In Makeup. I will leave that story down below. Very similar to the last one that we talked about. This one was, a, a, I'm giving you information that is just not out there. I'm connecting dots that have not been connected before. What we learned from this is that Susan Yara Yara broke FTC regulations when it came to launching her brand called Naturium. Now, it's important to note, and this is something that people keep bringing up to me, that Naturium was a brand in 2019 before Susan signed on. Absolutely. But Susan started promoting it after she was working with the brand. And it's very clear because in her launch video, she said specifically that she had helped design the packaging. She had said she had picked the different formulas when she was talking to another influencer that she had video called to tell that that was her brand. She had, there were clips of her talking about how involved she was in the process of making these products. Now let's go ahead and cut away from the influencers and cut to Sunday, June 21st, when Susan announces that Naturium is her skincare line. Go ahead and take a listen as she explains her brand launch strategy. So let me tell you a little bit about the last few months. We officially launched in February and it was really important to me to get honest and true feedback from everyone. And I, you know, I took a step back and I was like, I don't think I'm gonna get that if I just announce that this is my skincare line from the get go. So we launched in February of 2020 and I was planning to tell you guys pretty soon after that, that I was the person behind Naturium. And then you guys know what happened in March, everything kind of changed. In my opinion, Susan did absolutely nothing wrong by not disclosing her relationship with the brand to the influencers who did not pay for products, but it was extremely misleading not to tell her Facebook group or her YouTube audience. And if you remember from a few minutes ago, it's also against FTC regulations and could result in huge fines for Susan and her brand. If you know this whole story, I think I know what you're thinking. What about her apology video that she put out a few days after her launch video, where she says that she just became an official co-founder a couple of weeks ago? Let's let Susan talk about that. Over the last few days of self-reflection and talking to friends, I realized that context was really, was really necessary in this conversation. Up until a couple of weeks ago, I hadn't become the formal partner and the formal founder, co-founder of Naturium. I signed my agreement, my formal agreement, just a couple weeks ago. You might've noticed a little bit of buzz about my brand over the last couple of months. I wanna tell you a little bit more about it. The most important thing about this brand is that I wanted to make sure all of the ingredients are really, truly effective ingredients. But really, this is a brand that all of you have been asking for. I have been paying attention to all of the things that you've been asking for over the last couple of years. I signed my agreement, my formal agreement just a couple weeks ago. And I'm really focused on trying to make the brand more sustainable. We've done a really good job of making sure these are the best products that you can get. Well, if you notice, there's a lot of focus on retinol and vitamin C, because those are my two. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I signed my agreement, my formal agreement, just a couple weeks ago. So it seems based on Susan's story, the timeline is this. She works with her investor, Ben, to develop the formulas and packaging for Notorium. It's not just me behind this brand. I have a business partner and I honestly don't know how I would have done any of this looking back without him and his team really guiding me through this entire process. There's we know from other brands disclosing that this process takes six months to a year. So let's say this relationship potentially started at the earliest in April of 2019. They have a soft launch on Amazon in October per this interview and their website launch in February of 2020. Susan starts talking about the brand on her Facebook group and in her YouTube channel channel in April. Then she abruptly stops. She says it's because she now realizes she'll become co-founder. If you look back, I stopped talking about it when I realized that this is, this is going to happen. We're going to finally get our agreement together 
and it's going to become, I am the co-founder, I stopped talking about the brand. However, it's clear from her launch video that she not only had a relationship with the brand, but helped with the entire process along the way. Well, if you notice, there's a lot of focus on retinol and vitamin C, because those are my two. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Did she really not have any kind of agreement before that? I highly doubt it. Maybe it wasn't all formal agreement, but why would someone work with an investment company to develop skincare formulas for multiple products without knowing she would get something out of it? That just makes absolutely no sense. So regardless of what happened in 2019 or whether she had signed on to be a founder when she started promoting it is completely and totally irrelevant because she was promoting the brand as if she had no brand relationship. And the FTC specifically says that you must disclose any relationship, even if you're just friends with the person. But she was clearly, I mean, I don't understand why you would help develop packaging and formulas for a brand without having any kind of financial kick kickback. It makes absolutely no sense. I think what made this video special and why it got a lot of attention was because of taking things from different timelines and putting them together linear so that people could see the progression of things. I think that that was really important and really special to see for this particular situation. And one thing that if you don't watch the video to the whole end, the title is a little clickbait, okay? I'm gonna admit it. The title's a little clickbait. The title is, is this the biggest scam in influencer history? I say at the end that it's not. <laughs> I do admit that it's not the biggest scam in influencer history. And what's important about the clickbait title is that I did explore that question within the entire video. That was what the whole video was about, was exploring that question. But it was a little leading, I'll have to admit. Do I think this video would do well in 2023? Yeah, absolutely. Anytime anybody's being scammy, anytime anybody's being a little shady, People want to know about it. And I think it's important for, you know, us to know if there's somebody that's not acting right. <laughs> and it would have been one thing if it was just that she didn't disclose it verbally in the video, but, you know, she had the little YouTube thing. So I'm pretty sure that existed back then. The little YouTube thing that said, this is a paid partnership, that she had said, thank you to Naturium for working with me on this video in the description box. Like she had nothing, like nothing even hinting that she was in some way had a relationship with the brand. And I think that's why it hit people so hard and why this video resonated with so many people. Number five is very similar to the Lunar Beauty one. It's just replace Manny MUA with James Charles. <laughs> <laughs> it was what James didn't tell you, and it's talking about the pigments that are in his palette that he did with Morphe and that they were not FDA approved for eye use. But what I focused on in this particular video was that James, unlike Manny, James did not talk about it at all in his video. And there were people that were coming out saying that their eyes were stained, that they were getting hives and all kinds of stuff. It ended up in a lawsuit, uh, a class action lawsuit that actually ended up being on like a per permanent pause, kind of, because Morphe ended up declaring bankruptcy before it could be settled. But it was essentially the same video. Like I was saying about the Manny video, I do think that if this video was released today that it would do pretty well. I think it's absolutely fascinating that this one is number four. So this is called the Elf Primer Scam, Is It a Lie? I'll show you how they're doing it from June 18th of 2018. So I have to give you some background on this video. So I think that there was like a Facebook post something like that where people were taking their elf primer and they were taking it apart and they were showing that there was no product inside that there was hardly any product inside but what had actually happened was that they were opening it up and well let me just show you if you look inside here you can see the other little teeny tiny container that is hidden so the actual amount i I was flabbergasted. I couldn't even believe it. I thought this is like the height of deception. Okay, so maybe this is a plastic piece holding all the makeup, except there's no bottom. Now, that's overflowing. That's over the top. And there's still a ton of water in here. So really, it was just people not understanding packaging 
and how it worked. So this got a lot of attention at the time. And I think that it was because the original video was getting so much attention. As I pump the product, as I pump the water out, but we'll pretend like this is primer, you'll notice that the, uh, the stopper inside slowly moves inward. What that's doing is it's pushing the product up so that more product can be pumped out. Uh, and as we keep going, the stopper goes further up, more product comes out and eventually gets to the top and you run out of product. So when you purchase it, the stopper is all the way at the bottom. What I've done is I've filled up my uh, cooking little measuring cup with half an ounce of water. Uh, I use this for cooking all the time. I find it to be quite accurate. It's kind of the job of this brand to be accurate in this way. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna gently pour in the product here and we're gonna see whether it overflows like we see in a lot of videos. And oh, we can overflow, we can overflow. Oh no, not even close because, and it's actually um, going down to here. Uh, it's actually not all the way up. So if I take this and I pour this in, la da 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 da, we have half an ounce of water still. Uh, so I think what people are doing in order to scam this test, and I'll show you a clip of somebody's video right now. If you notice, he has the stopper pushed all the way to the top. So if I push the stopper all the way to the top, I'm gonna go ahead and start pouring this in. And what do you notice right away? Oh, it's overflowing. Oh my gosh, of course it's overflowing. The stopper's all the way at the top. I think this was popular because I think that the original videos really pissed people off. <laughs> I think people were mad at them because they were like, wait, something isn't making sense here. And that the fact that there was now a video confirming that they were right, that this other, this video made absolutely no sense, I think was very validating for people. And also people who may not have watched it closely or hadn't really thought about it that believed the video were like, oh crap, well, there you go. <laughs> so I do think this video would do well in 2023. It probably would be a TikTok video versus a Facebook video, but I do think that it would do well. The only way to stay this when the wind blowing that way, we ought to break the breezes. Number three was the heaviest video on this list because it has to do with Kat Von D and there's a lot of discussion of anti-Semitism in the video. It is very heavy in that way and also talking about just other things that Kat Von D had done, uh, the anti-vax stuff, the fact that she had named one of her lipsticks underage red, which is absolutely disgusting. I think that this was a very comprehensive look at the, you know, horribleness that Kat Von D had shown herself to be and her at the time being the face and the name behind Kat Von D Beauty, it was a big deal in our space to talk about it so people could decide for themselves whether they wanted to support or not. And I got a lot of heat off of this video, a lot of Kat Von D fans coming at me saying that, you know, what I was saying was unfounded and all of that, but it was literally all from articles that were linked down underneath the video description. But I think people were really upset because Kat Von D had so many fans back then that didn't know her history of these things and all the connections and she had specifically to anti-Semitism. This was a really difficult video for me to make because my mother and her whole side of the family is all Jewish. So it, it, I played it off pretty well in the video, but it really did affect me. And what I wasn't prepared for was the amount of anti-Semitism that showed up in my comment section afterward. I kind of figured we would all be on the same page that anti-Semitism is bad, but I found out that not everybody feels that way. And I feel like I'm better now a little bit at protecting my mental health than I was in 2019. So I don't know, like, I honestly don't know if I would create this video in 2023 or not. I, I, I really don't know. I think I would have to kind of look inside myself and decide whether this would exist on my channel now, just because of the emotional impact that it took on me just from the response to this particular video. And I'll make you feel like you on the cloud and you can't sit still when we but let us move on to something a little bit more lighthearted. And this is the video that really brought a lot of you to my channel. <laughs> this video is titled, Sponsored Video Gone Wrong, Why L'Occitane Made Me Take Down My Video, May 8th of 2018. <laughs> I had, I was shocked at how much attention this video got. This video got way more attention than I 
ever could have imagined. Uh, the gist of the video is that I had a sponsor video with Loxodon and I created, I was supposed to do two videos, one on their Immortal line and one on their Almond line. And they were supposed to pay me X amount of dollars. I made the first video and I told them what I was going to talk about. Oh, I told the company, the, the go between company that I was working with, I told them what I was going to, like what the topics were I was going to say. I spent so much time and effort, so much energy, so many hours making this video because I wanted it to be really good. It was, I, it was pretty early in doing sponsored videos and I really wanted it to be good. So I really like worked hard on it. And when the video went up, uh, L'Occitane said, absolutely not. You need to take that down. And this was before, believe it or not, this was before you had to submit the videos ahead of time for approval. Now, like when I work with that fit fun, I have to submit it to them for approval. We didn't have to do that back then. So when I uploaded it, the go between company was like, oh crap, you have to take that down. And I did, I took it down right away. And then they said they didn't want to pay me for it. And I was like, oh no, no. Oh no, no, I worked so hard on this video it, and I told you exactly what I was gonna say and then you made me take it down, which is fine, but you have to pay me. We signed a contract, you have to pay me. It's like if somebody does work on your house, if somebody, if a plumber goes in and they do work on your house and you sign off on what they're gonna do and you're like, no, I don't like that colored toilet. I'm not going to, you know, to pay you because you put in, uh, I don't like it. Now that the toilet's in, I don't like it. But when you signed off on that exact toilet, you know what I'm saying? So I showed receipts, I showed all this, as much as I possibly could, I showed on the screen. And I think this was the first video where anybody had ever really talked about sponsorship behind the scenes. So I really don't think this video would get as much attention now as it did back then. I would 100% make this video again. Uh, I feel like it's important to know what's happening behind the scenes. But I was so pissed. I was so pissed. I really didn't think that it would get them back as hard. And I will tell you, they did end up paying me for the video, but it, I don't believe it was Loxiton that paid me. I think it was the go-between company that ended up paying me. But the second video on the Almond line, which was going to be a glowing review of the products, I never ended up making because they killed the whole thing <laughs> but i did get paid and then finally i am absolutely shocked that this is the number one video on my channel it's actually only like 2,000 views away from a million views i do not have a single video on my channel over a million views this is why i use the term viral in quotation marks but this video is is kat von d ripping us off let's destroy tattoo liners and find out scam or not from february 23rd of 2019 and this was another video very similar to the elf video i'm just going to show you a little clip of that video so you can kind of see how it went. Hello, my friend. You may have heard a little bit of a rumor that started over, I don't know, the past few days. People were opening up their Kat Von D tattoo liners and realizing that the inside of the full size was the same size as the inside of the sample size and immediately freaked out. And I immediately started getting lots and lots and lots of Twitter messages. Okay, so my biggest fear doing this is that I'm going to break this and then the ink will spill everywhere and then the video will be nothing and I will have wasted 50 bucks. <laughs> Okay, I gave myself a blood blister, so I asked my husband to help me and he cracked this. And what we've got here is the instrument that leads to the brush tip that makes it, um, you know, flow into it. I think we've, I think we might've just, because I can't get the canister out. Or I mean, we could cut it. Ooh. I see it coming up a little bit. Who the hell does this? Like who mm -hmm. thought to do this? There we go, there's the canister. Okay, all right, cool, thank you. All right, so we've managed to get the canister out. Where do there's, there's nothing in there. <laughs> oh my gosh. Like that's it. That's plastic. Is there any liquid? That, I guess there is. You're looking at it, but there's nothing in there. There's no, there's no liquid in there. That's crazy. So that's how much liquid we're dealing with. Is the liquid that's coated here, a little tiny bit in here, but there's definitely not enough to measure. A little bit of product on there. There you go. Whoa. So that's, that's a significant amount of liquid there yeah. compared. Mm-hmm. Is there plastic in there? No, there's nothing in here that I can feel. It just feels like a cartridge. So that plastic was taking up the room inside of it. 
Ah, to try to keep it all together so that when you when it's dispersing the product because it needs something to fill up that space. Yeah, so they use the put, same cartridge, but yeah. they just add a piece of plastic to it. Yeah, look at, I like, mean. That's science, man. <laughs> that's straight up science. What we learned is that the canisters are the same size. In the sample size, they put this piece of plastic to fill the space. And that way it doesn't, uh, it'll still disperse the product the same, even though it's in the same size container. Honestly, looking back at these, the Elf one and the Kat Von D one, I really wanna break things again because those videos were so fun to make. I really loved making them. They were a blast, but I don't know what I would break. Like, I don't to just break stuff to break stuff like there has to be a purpose to it so if you ever see something that you feel like needs to be broken and taken apart and inspected just let me know <laughs> just call me and be like hey jen you need to break this and i'll be like all right i'll break it because <laughs> those videos really were a lot of fun so like the elf video with the Kat Von d one it would depend on how widespread that there was a scam going on that there was how many views i think it would get now but man is it fun to look inside of products <laughs> I did notice a trend between all of these videos that I talked about today. And the trend is that they're all exposed videos. They're all giving you new information or putting things together in a way that just wasn't put out there before. And I do feel like that is a strength on my channel and something that I absolutely love to do. The problem is, is you can't manufacture that. You have to wait until it happens. But when it does, I will be there to do the thing. I've done it recently with all the Morphe bankruptcy stuff, with the Jaclyn Hill timeline, all that. I will continue to do it because I genuinely love putting together pieces of a puzzle and laying it all out for you so that you can see it. The other connection is that a lot of these had to do with celebrities and they had to do with brands that were very popular or they had to do with influencers because I think people are attracted to learning more about things that they already know some about but maybe they don't know everything about. There are two videos that I skipped over for this video and I do want to give them an honorable mention. The reason why I skipped them over is because they weren't controversial videos in any way and I was kind of making a point between the controversial videos. So the first one is called Facing My Fears, The Curl Secret Disaster. And honestly, the only reason why I think this one got a lot of attention was because there was a video that had gone viral not too long before that, where the girl literally burned her hair off. And I think people wanted to see me burn my hair off. And then, cut 20. Cut 20 or longer, actually. And I did the thumbnail so that it would look like I was going to burn my hair off, but then I didn't burn my hair off. So it was super clickbait. It was super clickbait. That video would not do well today. And then the other one was me trying new face for a month. And I think that the reason why that one did really well was because of the thumbnail that John created for me, because that was a freaking awesome thumbnail. And the other reason is because new face is just so damn expensive that I think people really want to know whether it's worth it or not. And every time the holidays run roll around, that video gets a big spike in views because people are looking at possibly purchasing it. So at this point, my friend, it is your turn in the collective brain of Make of Awesomeness where we help each other not to to buy crap and we like to talk about things that are relevant in the beauty space and things that go viral in the beauty space and why. I would love to know your thoughts about the topics I talked about today, about the videos I talked about today. If you found me through one of those videos, I would love to know which one you watched. And if you have other people that are in the beauty space that they had a video that was similar to this that you can feel like it relates to this conversation, I would love to know who created it and what the video was. Leave your thoughts down in the comment section down below. Thank you so, so much for watching. If you would like to hang out just a little bit longer, YouTube should be recommending a couple of videos for you right over here to watch, including one that I picked up for you special right there. YouTube should pick the top one for you based on your viewing history. But if you do need to go, I'll get it. It is no problem at all. Thank you for hanging out as long as you did. And I'd love to, and I will see you in a video very, very soon.